Welcome, Lakshmi. Hello. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for um, being early. Unexpectedly, you're supposed to be on uh, hour two, but here you are saving the first hour because Mike's not here. So just before we ask you a few questions, um, just let me read a bit about you. Uh, Lakshmi Gauda, she doesn't look it, but she's 26 years old. She's half Indian, half English Aussie, and she was born in London, but raised in Australia. And uh, this is what is the trend these days. She is a sustainable fashion designer and real estate contributor. She has a mission to promote in various community groups, including the Philippine-Australian community, the responsible consumption of fabric and finished garments. Fast fashion is considered as one of the world's largest polluters shortly after the oil industry. Wow. I didn't know it was that bad, Lakshmi. Yeah, huh? Wonderful. I was horrible. Yeah. Listen, we will listen to you and about your advocacy and hopefully we are going to achieve or contribute to the goal keeping our planet away from disastrous effects of industrialization. So again, welcome and uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. And, and Lakshmi, um, you, you have been also doing things with Filipino community groups or in, in the area. Yeah, that's right. So I had the wonderful pleasure of meeting Mike Illigan. And um, so Mike is Filipino and he does a lot of work in the community, especially in the entertainment sector and the fashion world and also the real estate world as well. So I've been working closely with him um, since June last year and uh, he's really opened up the world to me and I feel really blessed to be a part of this community as well. Okay, and do you sing and dance and all that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would like to sing. I kind of feel like I sound like a toad in a drain pipe, but um, I can design fashion very well and dress other people. And um, I like to think I can dance as well sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this could be the first time. This could be your break that you're waiting for, huh? Uh, Singing-wise. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, anyway... Um, Having been exposed to Filipino Australian community, what is your general observation or comment about about yeah. us, about the community that kind of encourage you to keep yes. keep going with them? One of the biggest things I noticed was how together the community is here. There's such a strong spirit and just um the people I've been working with, even in real estate and entertainment in the Filipino Australian communities, everyone is like family. It doesn't matter, you know, if you don't know who each other is, that when you're in that space, you're family. And I find that so inspiring. Like, there's such a strong community spirit. And if you need something or you need help or anything like that, there's always someone in the community available there to help you through whatever it is that you need or what you're going through. And I find that really encouraging and inspiring. That's wonderful, huh, Paul? Have you been to the Philippines at all? No, but I'd oh, love to go. go. <laughs> I see all the pictures and yeah. all the Miss Universes. And it just looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I'd love you to go. You could volunteer to Mike to take you forever <laughs> for his uh, next uh, his assignment. So, Paul, do you have a question? Well, for one us? of the questions on here was, um, see, she does a lot of blogs and uh, in fashion shows and um, uh, reality interview and she did an interview with Rocky Gathercole. Yeah. So do you want to tell us about that? That was amazing. Oh, what an experience. I almost don't have the words to describe that. When I met um, Rocky, I knew a little bit about him. I'd seen some of his work before. He's dressed obviously some of the biggest stars yeah. um, in the world and just his work is so incredible it's just on another level it's like wearable art really and um when i met him in person he's just one of the most humblest and most sweetest souls that you'll ever meet and um you can really see that beauty from his heart come out through his work and it was just um such an honor to meet him and um I'm very inspired by him just on his mission as well, um, just with his foundation and all the work that he's doing for child trafficking around the world. I think that's really important because um, it's such a massive issue and I just love everything that he's about and you can really see like why he is the person that he is. He yeah. operates from his heart. 
and uh, this amazing life story and uh, I feel so humbled that I was also able to do a short interview and publish an article about him. Uh, those who missed it, you could uh, probably uh, Google for Ankalatas and uh, just for Rocky Gathered Cole um, article and uh, read about him and you'll be amazed how you know, a child or a, a person brought out in the circumstances would be able to rise up and, uh, you know, overcome obstacles and be a fantastic uh, achiever and yet remain humble, mm. you know, like sincerely humble and um, really amazing sort of person. Anyway, uh, that's a good introduction. So what we might do is uh, play a few... Uh, radio announcements and then when we come back we're going to find out some more about Laxmi so please don't go away okay Laxmi this is now part two of uh, your interview with us so, so thank you so much hey yeah so yeah w- when did you uh, realize uh, your passion for this is gonna be like a tongue twister okay. passion for fashion oh yes designing and all that yeah oh man it's been such a journey i couldn't even pinpoint it's just been a series of things that have just popped up in life my mom she's been doing this her whole life and just you know um she never really got the opportunity to pursue it and you know parents said you've got to be a teacher a doctor a lawyer and creativity wasn't really seen as something you know that was going to build your life yeah they might even say get a real job yeah exactly (laughs) i've heard that a few times yeah it's to actors they say that too because they're waiting on tables during the day exactly exactly so just watching her make all my clothes as a child everything i wore she made and we didn't have a lot growing up um so she used to recycle clothing even all those years ago so she might take one of her old dresses and make it into a mini dress for me and Mm -hmm. we'd go vintage shopping and all that kind of stuff stuff and I just kind of you know kept pursuing it as I got older and then took it seriously studied fashion um, for a few years as well and it kind of escalated from there and then obviously the way the world is going there's more information coming out about fast fashion and the damage that it's doing and as soon as I saw um, what was happening in the world with fashion it cemented it for me and I knew I had to do something in this area. Just uh, step back a bit for, you know, people who might not be fast enough to pick it up. (laughs) But a definition of fast fashion, please. Okay, so fast fashion is basically what you see in stores. So it's multiple duplications of an outfit. So So it's the RTW. Yeah, so kind of like your, you know, Myers Target, H&M, Zara, ready to wear, basically. That's what fast fashion is. Yeah. Mm But, of course, we realize that not everyone can afford to have individually designed clothes. And uh, as you know, um, you say, you, you know, you grew up in some surrounding that may be not affluent. Yes. But um, I, I, for one, we were poor. And I cannot even keep up with the fast, you know, the RTWs. Like, if this month the fashion was gray with pink dots... It probably in in Manila very strong uh, in dictator fashion. It probably take me two months to save up for a skirt mm. that would have um, that would be gray with pink dots. So all the more the difference, the divide uh, between the rich and the poor becomes so um, expressed. You know, so highlighted. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Well, that's what I always say. I mean, having grown up with not a lot myself, you don't need a lot of money to look stylish. You know, it's, um, I always say, use what you have. Like, I'm sure we've all got things in our wardrobe that we don't look at. And what you do is you just restyle it. I always say, restyle it. Even just changing a belt or a simple color of a shoe can transform an entire outfit. And if you don't know where to start, go vintage shopping. There are so many awesome hidden gems at vintage stores. I just got um, a designer jacket the other day. It was um, actually a sort of big designer in Australia some years ago and um, her company shut down. Basically, I found that jacket in there for $25 yeah. and it's absolutely mm. stunning. Yeah. It's been worn before, but it's still in good condition yeah. and it's yeah. really pretty. So. I, I remember when I was a young bloke a few years ago and uh, and what I used to do is wait till the end of the fashion. 
So when when something you know got just just before it went out of fashion, and they had these massive big sales on in those shops that you could never afford to go into, and I'd pick up a nice suit and all that sort of thing, really cheap. And uh, everyone thought I was right up with the fashion because yeah. I wore it, you know. And uh, even though it was, I got it really cheap, you know. So sometimes exactly. it, it's just I, I, I maybe didn't go to Vinnie's at that time, but I do go to Vinnie's now. But uh, that's the sort of thing that I used to do. Right at the end of the fashion, they always had these huge sales. Yes. And I always got, got the best of their clothes. That's yeah. the best okay. way. Yeah. Tell us about... Uh, your journey. I saw on your blog that you had a tough beginning in 2018. That you wanted, you, you started telling everyone to, uh, you're trying to inspire them, but you're telling them how tough it was. Tell us about that. Oh, wow. Actually, it's funny that we're in February and we're talking about love. Um, <laughs> I think everyone's had a bad breakup in their life. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, it's. Um, it's been a really long journey, I guess, you know, having sort of troubled beginnings from, you know, as young as four, I can remember. I've had, you know, um, sort of sad things happen with relationships and I've always sort of struggled in that area, maybe dating the wrong people um, too many times. And obviously, you know, when you're not focused on yourself and get yourself together, you, you attract what you are in that moment. And I just attracted the wrong people into my life. And your community is everything. That's why I just love the community spirit. Um, I think it really helps a person on their journey. And just being surrounded by the not right people also brings not good circumstances. And it took a massive toll on my mental health. And um, I just suffered severe anxiety and depression, just navigating those relationships and trying to find out who I was as a person. What why am I on this planet? What do I have to give? And um, I think a lot of us ask those questions. So I was on a sort of truth quest to find out who is who is that and how do I get there? Um, so basically, my, that was my self-discovery journey. And um, it came with a lot of heartache and a lot of pain. And I realized, you know, when you just take time out for yourself, just breathe, connect with God, no matter how long that takes, then you start finding yourself again. And it's just one small step every day towards anything in your heart, anything that you love, whether it's painting, drawing, singing, running, whatever it is, just take one step towards that for yourself in your own life and you'll see your world slowly change around you. Well, thank you so much for uh, sharing that, Lakshmi, because uh, as we know, we are now getting into promoting advocacy or help for people with uh, mental health issues. Um, you've just described how you can be the low, low, and you think there's no way, but you've just described how you could actually overcome these sort of uh, challenges and and gather yourself again and, and you know, and look at you, you're contributing your... You're on top of your your journey again. I would say, yeah. <laughs> uh, finally, yeah. So <laughs> that, that's fantastic example to people who might be experiencing uh, challenges like you know um, depression yeah. and uh, the feeling of anxiety. So mm. there's help out there. So wag po kayo magatubili kung may nararamdaman kayo na ganon. Aanjan pong ating mga specialists. You know, we because. You need professional help sometimes, yes. you know. It, although you might say to a friend, "Oh, I'm this and that," but um, sometimes your friend might give you a, a good advice. But I don't know. You might resent it. You know, mm. she thinks she's better exactly. than me, or you know, I mean, she's a, a human nature. Yeah. Whereas if it's a professional, professional telling you, and this professional had done years of studies. Mm seen a lot of um, you know similar cases very experienced, yeah, yeah very experienced yeah. so that, that makes sense so uh, sis Chris uh, who has gathered her her breath after her car broke down on her <laughs> you have a question for Lakshmi yes um, you are an incredible woman in, and you are a vegan <laughs> well my daughter is actually a vegetarian oh no you design and use recycled material and clothes, and you do blogs. And, and what's now? next for that um, Lakshmi Goda? 
Oh, what's next? Honestly, I've kind of gotten to this point in my life where I've learned to just let God lead, that when you take things into your own hands, they get messed up. So wherever He wants to take me, that's where I'll go, and I'll just follow my heart. Mm, fantastic. So I am very sound advice for getting here. Uh, I don't have to see my therapist this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm okay. <laughs> uh, doc, I'm not going to see you today, okay? Because Laksmi is already giving me sound advice here. But um, on the flip side, uh, you know, you, you've seen the really sad and low point. What would you consider to be the fondest achievement? Oh, the achievement you hold fondest in your heart. Oh, wow. It doesn't have to be an award. It doesn't have to be an award. But what do you hold in your heart to say, wow, I've done it or I, I've been there or, or whatever? I think um, one of the biggest achievements was overcoming my mental battle. And that came from instead of seeing life through your through your mind and just what the world says you see it through your heart so you really just genuinely love people for who they are and accept yourself for who you are and I think when you live life genuinely from the depths of your heart things just change all around you and it took years to learn that and to find out exactly what that means but if you start that journey and you experience that you'll know exactly what I'm talking about I think um, that was a major for sure and because this is month, Valentine's Day, love, I'm going to be playing Cupid. So look up, check out the photos of Gaudi and our FB promo. You see how gorgeous she is. Mm-hmm. So I if you want to send special messages, send it through Tagumpay. <laughs> and we will publish it or we will read it out to her. Mm-hmm. Yan po, so. So sis, um, yeah, that that is my uh, addition to what you just said. That's uh, that's what you hold in your heart. So that's very great. Mm-hmm. And uh, the favorite question of Miss Pin oh. and uh, Miss Jinky, uh, Chris. Oh, actually, um, success. Tagumpay means success. Yeah, it's Filipino word for yeah, success. Yeah, that's the word. Our word for success. Tagumpay. Paul, remember that tagumpay, tagumpay. means success. Can you pronounce it? Tagumpay. Tagumpay. Yes, means success. Um, how do you define that? How you know, the f- success? I think it's not going to be an answer that most people would say. Like in terms of materialistic things, I think true success is when you find peace, when you find genuine peace in your heart. And just the way the world is wired today, I feel like it takes us so far away from that. And I think if you can find that. Peace, you've got everything. I I support that. I agree with that because you might have millions and and of course you know it it kind of sad when we refer to them. But it's just like we have the cases of people who think we thought had everything, money wise, fame, and everything. We have the lovable. Robin Williams is yeah. one example, and I do include him in my prayer. Uh, people who in their talent, you know, because they're talented, they get um, exploited mm. and the, their lives get shortened, you know, like uh, I went to um, like the story of um, Freddie Mercury, the Queen, you know, and Michael Jackson and all that, even Elvis Presley, like the minders were not really looking after them sincerely because otherwise you would say, hey, why are you doing that to yourself? Why are you doing that, right? So, yeah, let's look out for one another. It's also the big message there. Massively, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Actually, you have a project this year to improve the fashion industry. Um, Bad environment record. What what you can tell us about that? Okay, so um, the mission? Mm. Yeah. Okay, well... I mean, I always say like great change starts with small, simple steps. And I often hear a lot of people say, you know, I want to help, but how am I going to help the world? I can't do anything. I'm so small. But it's not true. I always say you just doing one small, simple step, that's going to transform the world. So, you know, it's cliche, but you start with yourself. And with fast fashion being one of the number two contributors in the world of pollution right after oil, that's massive. And that's clothes. We all wear clothes. Um, so I always say one small, simple step, you know, will make the difference. So one sort of campaign that I've been running 
um, since last year is just to rewear and restyle what you already have in your wardrobe. Go vintage shopping if you really want something new that no one's seen before. And I know working in the fashion industry, there's a massive pressure to have a brand new outfit at every single event. But one thing I've noticed, I've reworn a few things and most people can't tell. Um, so <laughs> I think it's just a mentality, to be honest. And, and I um, think it's the way you carry them. I think so. It's, it's just, you it's walk in the there day, and you think it? you're a goddess, right? <laughs> <laughs> she is. Uh, you just walk in there and people will look yeah. up and you say, hey, goddess has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Uh, it actually a serious message there, but uh, we're just uh, making, you know, sort of mm. uh, light so that we have uh, an enjoyable uh, conversation here as well. Um, we might take a break. I think we might have some radio announcements, so don't go away. You're listening to Radio Tagumpay on Triple H, 100.1 FM. So, there's the first hour gone, and we oh, had so wow. much fun. So, yeah, before we let you go, Lakshmi, thank you so much again for making the trek earlier, even that. And, um, yeah, before we go, do you have a special message? Yeah, go yeah. on. Um, thank you so much for having me. I've had so much fun with you guys. And I guess um, my final message would be, if you're unhappy, things aren't going so good, and there's something that you're genuinely really passionate about, but you're too scared, I say face your fear, give it a chance. Even if it's just a tiny step towards it every day, you won't regret it. I promise you won't regret it. And watch your life change. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, so, Great yeah. messages you've been yeah. giving us all today. And uh, uh, Viola's already said she won't have to go and get any special help today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to see my uh, therapist today. Yeah, I would have been here. That's right. Do you have a special shout out, Lakshmi, that you want to? Ooh. A special someone or just friends? Or, <laughs> uh, this is giving away secrets, huh? <laughs> I guess a special shout out to all the people who've helped me on my journey right from the beginning. I love you all and I'm so grateful I wouldn't be here without any of you. And of course, God. That's so lovely. Yeah, That's, uh, yeah, gratitude is always mm. a grateful heart. It's a happy heart.